want to take just a few minutes to reflect on what we've seen come to the river. The river is symbolic of life when we read about it in Scripture. John 7, 38 and 39 says, Out of a person's inner being shall flow rivers of living water. That particular reference makes it clear that that water is a result of the Holy Spirit being in our lives. The initial encounter with the Holy Spirit comes when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. To know about God is not enough. You need to establish a personal relationship with Him. John 1.12 says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become children of God. You are not born a child of God. You are born into the world, but you only become a child of God when you are born again. And that born again means that Jesus has been given permission to come into our lives by an invitation. We invite him. This story was especially moving at least for me personally, and I, I pray that somewhere in the depths of your soul something got unearthed a little bit, maybe something that's been there for a while that needs to move out of the way so that God can accomplish what it is that he wants to do in our lives. Not just to us, but what he wants to do through us. There's one of the things that came as I heard this again when Ben made it a point and it's obviously ref referenced in scripture when having experienced the freedom that he did he wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus told him no I don't know about you personally but I don't know if that was a no that I could handle because so many times when God does something like that in our lives, the enemy comes and says, you know, if you don't just stay connected to that, and hear me clearly when I say this, because this might sound a little theologically suspect, because we do have to stay connected to Jesus. But something had to take place in the man's life where he realized that what Jesus did in his life was sufficient to carry him even if Jesus physically wasn't there. Because it wasn't just that activity that he experienced in his life that, that established his destiny. It was the Word that established his destiny. Revelation 7.10 says, Salvation belongs to our God. No other way can a man be saved except through Jesus. In the encounter that this man had with Jesus, the story is very clear that he came to meet Jesus as soon as Jesus was getting out of the boat. A place where Again, he would find himself confronted with things that wanted to control his life over which he seemed to have no control. We can read the story and say, boy, am I glad that isn't me. Having that much negative activity going on in your life because when Jesus spoke to that which was controlling the man's life, to the demonic power, to the demonic stronghold, he said, who is or what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. And then the biblical understanding of Legion it makes reference to an army that is somewhere between four and six thousand, four thousand and six thousand strong. I mean, no, that's a lot of spiritual activity going on in your life. But rather than just considering the size of what it was that was controlling the man's life, 
We need to see how Jesus looks at things. Because it's a look that we ought to have. If we come to the river and we taste of the river, then the result of tasting of that river should be that the river ought to flow through us. So that when people taste of us, they don't go, oh, yuck, and then spit us out because there's something distasteful in the exchange. But there could come such a sense of, wow, whatever it is you have, I want that. Well, in this man's undelivered state, the only thing that people wanted to do is try to bind him up. But I want to say that when Jesus appeared and he saw him, can I take the liberty of saying that was that man's resurrection Sunday? Because whatever had kept him in the atmosphere of death was now about to meet the one who said, I hold the keys of death and hell. I can open doors that no man can close. And I can close doors that no man can open. All of that, that river standing in front of this man, making itself available that if you want to come, you can taste of this river. And in fact, when you remove the blockages or allow the blockages to be removed, that same river is going to flow through you. I love the fact that it basically echoed every part of our, our word for this year, 2016, the year of faith's rewards. Because this man was looking at no future, no freedom, and no salvation. But when he met Jesus, he met restoration, he met healing, and he was given new vision. Freedom from unwanted control, from torment and harassment. Don't know if you've ever exper experienced any of that. I have. Freedom from unwanted control, torment, harassment. He did it all. So freedom can come to both great and small, short and tall. Salvation. Salvation. And for me, this is the evidence of when Jesus comes into your life and you allow him to do what he does best, best and that's to bring freedom to us. When you realize there's a restriction in your life and Jesus has the key to deliver you from that restriction. Well, pastor, I don't have any condition like that. Let me offer you something this morning realized in my own life. Before I invited Jesus into my heart, I had difficulty among difficulties in my life. One of the most difficult was to love unconditionally and to be loved. I realized there was a restriction in my life. I didn't know how to love unconditionally. How many know what I'm talking about? How do you love unconditionally, Pastor? 
It's when you don't take into account a wrong suffered. It's when somebody can use you and abuse you and you can still love them. How about this one? When their potential in your eyes becomes greater than their faults. How many realize that we may be tiptoeing around some needed deliverance in our lives even this morning? How many know it's easier to point out somebody's flaws, faults, or shortcomings? Obviously, under the canopy of love, and if you have any type of teaching ministry at all, you want to make sure that they understand that they can be free. And so it's our commission to make sure that they're aware of their faults. Because after all, if you're not aware of your faults, how can you be free? How many know sometimes that eyesight is a little clouded? How many know that when Jesus looked at this guy, he knew he had problems? But he looked beyond his problems to see his potential. You ever been in a situation where you feel like people don't realize your full potential? And silently there is a roar that says, yeah, in the church, I mean in my work. Nobody really recognizes what it is that I have to offer. One of the last things that Jesus talked about with his disciples before he was crucified. He says, this is my commandment, that you love one another. In that same chapter, John 15, he follows that with verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay one's, down one's life for his friends. What does that have to do with the man that has come out of the tombs, Pastor? Because at this point, Jesus saw the bondage in his life. But what was more important to Jesus was not the things that was holding him, but the potential that Jesus had to release through him. Again, this morning when I saw that, I was moved to tears, wondering if I would have been in that situation. Could I have really allowed the man to approach me? Realizing the power that he possessed. How many know that a power possessed him, but he possessed power? Because the Bible tells us that they bound him with chains. And he broke the chains. How many know that's a lot of power? But Jesus looked beyond that which was holding him. And he looked at the potential that the man held. That if he could experience his freedom, the flow would begin. He spoke those words in Mark 5, 8. Come out. There was a bit of exchange there, but even as Ben reminded us. When the word comes, the demons have no choice. They have to leave. Unless, of course, the person wants to stay in that condition, which your will is involved. 
Salvation belongs to our God. The men began to experience deliverance through the word. Now again, we may look in the mirror and say, well, that certainly isn't a reflection of my situation. I sort of mentioned this earlier, but I want to come down to this this morning. I want to offer something to you. See, I was bound and I didn't know it until the word came and said, you're bound. You're bound. I, I said, how's that? I said, you're bound with a spirit of rejection. Of course, I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that. You know, the unfortunate thing about understanding the power of rebuking if you rebuke Jesus in Jesus' name, he doesn't have to leave. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Nothing left. And after some wrestling with God, I found out that what he said by his word was true. I had the opportunity to experience freedom and deliverance. See, when you're bound, first, it's difficult to see it. Secondly, as I said earlier, it's difficult to love unconditionally. It's also difficult to receive love. Because God is love, God's intention is that every person that comes into the world have the opportunity to experience love. It's the greatest need in humanity to be loved. But in order to be loved, you've got to allow yourself to be loved. And in order to be loved, you've got to have somebody who wants to love you. When you are bound, it's difficult to love unconditionally. I'd like to say today, like the man, like the man we saw, today is the day of our freedom, if we want it. Salvation belongs to our God. We had the opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper this morning, which is the epitome of a river that flows whose purpose is to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it's the picture of Jesus. This is my body, this is my blood. And as we close this morning, I'd like to just simply ask you, have you found it difficult to love unconditionally? Do you have some hurt standing in the way of your feeling free? Oh no, pastor, I can love unconditionally. All right, then how about being loved? Oh, pastor, I have a problem with that. I remember opening myself up to be loved and that person took advantage of me and been there, done that, don't want to do it again. Saints, the river needs to flow from heaven into the church 
and the river needs to be breaking the doors off their hinges and flowing out into the streets. Like an Ezekiel 47 river, teeming with life, full of freedom, full of salvation, a future, a hope, freedom. But it begins with us. It has to begin in the house of God. That's why Jesus came. He came first to the house of Israel. And he says, Israel, you're bound. You live according to the law, but not the spirit. For you will hold someone responsible. Listen clearly. For their adultery. But you don't consider how they got into it and what their potential is if they can get free from it, which you have the power in the word to communicate to them so that they can do my purpose in their unfettered state that they couldn't do when they were bound. I want to tell you something that if I would have remained in my bound state, I wouldn't be here today. And for sure, I wouldn't be standing before you. Oh, so you're perfect, Pastor. No. Even this morning, Pastor Vivian and I were talking. Just even something that I had said the other day that I, I knew that right then and there, as she brought it to my remembrance, that I needed to repent. Because it could have headed for a bondage that I didn't need. Can we be honest for just a couple of minutes? Have you found it difficult to love unconditionally? Anybody in the room? Just look around. It doesn't mean that everybody has to have their hands up. How many have found it difficult to be loved? There's a bit of reserve in you that if I let somebody love me, it means that it opens the door to the possibility of abuse, right? Well, in the scripture here, the implication was that there was a restriction in the man's life that kept him from the purposes of God in his life, and which would ultimately be expressed and the fact that he would receive the word of God from Jesus, excuse me, Jesus, and go do what Jesus told him to do, which in the way that he did it was not just a statement of his freedom, but a testimony of his deliverance. And what he didn't have then, he has now. See, you can't give what you don't have. Well, pastor, you need to understand that it's a smart person who considers that you just can't give yourself away. As Will saying, you can't just do that, Will. You got to know what's required of you first. You got to look at the contract, Will. Nobody in their right mind signs a blank contract, Will. It just doesn't happen today. Decapolis. Decapolis means 10. Not only did this man go to one city, but he ministered in 10 cities. Whereas before, listen to me, whereas before he wasn't received in one of them. See, Jesus can open doors that you cannot open. He can make a way where there is no way. 
But in order for us to access that, we've got to be willing to say, Lord, I pass by your table. I saw the production this morning. But I don't know about that loving unconditionally. My question is, how far do you want to go? How much like Jesus do you want to be? How much of what he did do you want to do? John 14, 12, Jesus says, says these words. And the things that I do, even greater than these shall you do. Amen. If people know you are my, not followers. You can follow someone for a lot of different reasons. But if you are my disciple, and what is, what's one of the earmarks of you being my disciple? You have love, Bob. Tom, you have love. Ron, you have love. Pat, you have love. Don, you have love. That's one of the characteristics that you're my disciple, that you have love one for another. It's time for the church to take off their microscope and ask Jesus to heal their eyes. So we stop fault finding and look for potential. Amen. Amen. Salvation belongs to our God. I'm happy this morning. Because even this morning, I said, Lord, please forgive me. I allowed a little thought to creep in that wanted to find a greater foothold. And I said, no. Pastor, it's getting dangerously close now. Because the only thing I can think about is you said, how do you know you're bound? If you can't love unconditionally. Now, Pastor, I need to have a talk with you because it's more complicated than that. Seriously, it is. I'm going to pray in just a moment. If that's you, I want you to just come and stand up here. You can stand in front of the table, behind the table. Just find a place. Because it's time for the river to flow beyond the limitations of coming to us. It's now got to flow through us. The world is dying of thirst. They're doing everything they can to find something that satisfies. But the Bible says the river comes from his throne, a river teeming with life. The book of Psalms tells us there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. He's the river that makes you a stream. There is a river whose streams 
Make glad the city of God. How do you know you're bound, Pastor? Is it difficult for you to live and to love unconditionally or to receive love? If that's you, let's be bold this morning. Do you know what that man had to suffer when he approached Jesus? Not the least of which was the disciples. They had already rebuked the kids and told the kids not to bother Jesus. They had already tried to address a blind man, look, the master's too busy to talk to you. But it tells us that when he had come out of the boat, Jesus immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man. He had tried to find freedom in the only place that he knew, living in the atmosphere of death until Jesus came. Can I encourage you this morning? This is your Jesus moment. If we're not willing to deal with our bondage. The difficulty is the river doesn't flow as freely as it should. And one of the very apparent things that happens is most people will see your bondage before you do. So let me pray. If that's you, you can come forward and you can be free. And if there's been any stoppage at all. Well, Pastor, give me just a little bit more help. How can that happen? Have you ever sat around the table and chatted about other people? Obviously, in the interest of making sure that everybody's aware that the person has problem. Oh, I mean that the person needs to be free. You ever done that? And of course, you can disguise it in, oh, we just want to really help that person. Well, you can help that person by shutting up and by praying and by looking beyond their faults and looking at their potential. Now, I'm fully aware that some of you are sitting down, really ought to be standing up. And if you don't choose to do it now, I'm afraid of what's going to happen to you later. Oh, pastor, you're cursing us, no. Jesus said, if you don't want salvation, it's fine. You'll just be on your way to hell. Not my choice, yours. Father, I pray this morning, as we've seen Resurrection Day visit this man, others probably motivated by compassion to help this man would bind him with chains to keep him from hurting himself. That's the limit of what they knew. We're not faulting them, Lord. But when you showed up, you saw his potential, not just his problem. Today, Lord, we stand in that same place, not as Jesus speaking the word, but as ones needing to receive the word so that we can go out and speak it. Lord, I've had a difficulty loving unconditionally. And I've also had a difficulty in being loved, and that's an evidence of something I need to be free from. So Lord, I stand here today with my heart open, my hands extended, saying, Lord, I don't want to be this way. 
I want to be free. Not just to enjoy myself, but to enjoy all that you have for me. The fullest potential that I can be. I need the river to come to me. I confess those restrictions. I confess my bondage. Make me free. I give up those bondages because I've used them to keep myself safe. Maybe I've even taught others how to be free and I came to a place where I realized being a teacher doesn't exempt you from being caught up again in the very things that you taught. Lord, set me free. I give you permission to come into my life and set me free. Because today is Resurrection Sunday. And I want that resurrection power flowing through me so that it will flow through me in a world that is so thirsty and so hungry for freedom. All the places they look for it, all the wrong places. It's going to get wild. It's going to get crazy. Because that which I have received, I'm going to go out and I'm going to give away. I'm going to give myself away. It's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy because the two.